Welcome back to the Per Report. There's no doubt that electric vehicles are environmentally friendly, but can they cope with running for long hours in Hong Kong's hilly terrain? Does it make good business sense to invest in them? This is an electric van, one of three logistics giant FedEx is testing for courier service. We will recharge them overnight, eight to ten hours, and it is enough for an eight-hour shift. The company started a two-year trial last year to compare electric vans with diesel-powered ones buying the same routes. From business perspective, we, of course, expecting a uh, fuel efficiency improvement. Initial results after six months show electric vans averaging 43% lower operating costs than diesel vehicles. It means that per kilometer, um, the money that EV can save can range from 30% to 50%. Cost saving is obvious. We are happy with that because it saves our uh, fuel cost and it also uh, has no emission. But there's a downside. The EVAN is slow to accelerate and climb uphill. They are not as powerful as a diesel vehicle. And EVs can go the distance diesel vans can. For our use in Hong Kong, the longest journey among those EVs is around 85 kilometers. But FedEx says all these don't impact its operation. The key thing is route planning. You will know the distance uh, the vehicle is going to travel every day. The biggest letdown is the after-sales support from the supplier, Smith Edison Vehicles, based in the United States. It took nearly six months to repair small damage in one of the EVs and had to replace the battery of another one. This is a new technology. Be before it comes to mature, we need the supply to provide reliable service. FedEx 10 events in Hong Kong are part of its global fleet of 530 electric and hybrid vehicles. FedEx saved the 2.4 million liter of fuel from 2005 to 2012. Using EVs and hybrid electric uh, vehicles. FedEx electric vehicles are among 73 under trials financed by the government's Pilot Green Transport Fund. The scheme, started in 2011, also subsidizes vehicle costs to encourage commercial electric car usage. We make public trial findings so that this can help the product suppliers to improve their product and after sales service. In the last six months, we have a better communication with the uh, vendor and uh, they also provide better support to us. I've driven it for a year. shouldn't be a problem. BYD E6, one of 45 electric taxis in Hong Kong, is made by mainland supplier BYD Auto. Much quieter. You can feel it too. <laughs> For 40 years, Choi has driven fuel-powered taxis. The rent is $460 per 12-hour shift. Fuel costs $170 a day. He takes home around $600 to $700, driving 10 hours, excluding lunch and rest. With an electric taxi, rent is $800 for 24 hours. Choi can take home $800 because charging his batteries is free. After I plug in, it says here, one hour and two minutes. A complete recharge takes two hours. And Choi works 16-hour shifts. You have to make up for the charging time. Drive two hours more, then you will earn less, because you save on petrol costs, which can be $10,000 a month. Can e-taxis do two 12-hour shifts instead? They average 200 kilometers without recharging. Half the 400 kilometers 
a conventional taxi can ply on a tank of gas. No, only two to three recharges. Still, that's up to six hours within 24 hours. EV drivers now do one full shift. That is, one driver for the whole day. Can't do two shifts. The recharging takes too long. Two hours to recharge from zero to 100 percent. Eddie Wong heads the Hong Kong Taxi and Public Light Bus Association. He says it doesn't make business sense for taxi operators to give up their fuel-driven taxis for electric ones. First, they're cheaper, plus... I don't need to waste time if I drive a petrol taxi. The rent is not that different. Which one would you choose? You would choose the gasoline taxi. It's quick charge. The electric is free. This charging station for electric taxis at the airport is one of a dozen BYD has set up in the city. Taxis can't be recharged at public car parks because their plugs differ from private cars. They basically have no infrastructure for taxis. Professor Hong Wing Tat of Polytechnic University is one of the government's three consultants monitoring the trials of electric vehicles under the Green Transport Fund. Our role would be to go out and collect data uh, from the fund recipients, monitor the expenses, operational difficulties, downtime, costs and benefits of these alternative vehicles. How about the response of the uh, transport sector to the uh, Pilot Green Transport Fund? It is not overwhelmingly welcomed by the uh, operators. It is lukewarm. They wait until all these trial schemes have definite result because there are uncertainties. It means investment risk in the part of the operator. You want so long a distance to the airport. If you just want to get charged and then you run back into the urban area, what's the point? It's a lot of wasteful trip. So consequently, that is a big concern of the taxi trade. Only 24 taxis are undergoing trials funded by the Green Transport Fund. Just $93 million of the fund's $300 million budget has been used up. At present, electric taxis are not attractive enough for us to apply for green funding. Few of our members have applied. Maybe when they can go 300 kilometers in future, unless performance improves or facilities are upgraded, then we'll consider it. Professor, are you satisfied with the way the government is promoting the use of electric vehicles? No, really disappointing. Because the uh, financial secretary, supposed to be the chairman of a steering committee to promote high-tech vehicles, the committee basically just doing nothing. Let the figures speak for it. In the past three years, the number of EV has increased by five times, from less than 100 in, by the end of 2010, um, up, to, up to the end of 2013, it's nearly 600. Secondary, the number of charging points has been increased to 1,000. Later this year, e-taxi suppliers will install more chargers at six government car parks. And taxi operators will get government subsidies to set up their own charges to support their operation. I charge at my private recharging station, and at the airport, I have two places only. Sani Wong's home charger costs $150,000. The cost of $150,000 is not fully subsidized by government. I pay half of it. The government and I each pay more than $70,000. Wong's taxi association, based in the new territories, plans to buy two more electric taxis and apply for subsidy from the Green Transport Fund. Recently, the government approved subsidies for 10 more taxis. If facilities remain inadequate, government approval is useless. We hope to have 12 parking spaces in each public housing estate. There are over 100 estates, so there will be enough spaces for our taxis. How would you characterize the response to the public green? I would say it's encouraging. Since launch of the front, we have been seeing more green innovative transport technologies coming to Hong Kong. 
instead of looking at the number of applications at the front, uh, I will see how much green products are entering into the market. One of the latest, an electric shuttle bus specially designed for Hong Kong. For example, the horsepower of the, uh, of the motor of this uh, bus is about 380 horsepower. So that it could be run up to Victoria. We have about 50% more batteries. Then mainland designed buses for a longer travel range. This bus is running for seven days a week, about 13 hours per day, between Kata and the MDR station of Kowloon Bay. One of five electric buses the company sold this year. The fuel cost would be only about 25% of that of the uh, diesel vehicle. For example, if you are spending $1,000 per month in using diesel, then probably you are spending 250 Hong Kong dollars uh, using this electric vehicle. But there's the usual catch. This electric bus costs twice more than a diesel bus, a price Hong Kong has to pay if it wants fresher air and quieter traffic. It depends on the, the view of the citizen in Hong Kong. If they want, really want to reduce the emission, especially the roadside emission, they have to use the electric vehicle. Well, thank you for watching our show. It will be re-aired on Tuesday and Saturday, as well as on TVB.com. Until next time, from the Pearl Report team, good night, good luck, and good health.